The wait is over. The Mac is back. The King is back. The one and only notorious Conor McGregor is returning to the UFC's octagon. It's been a long time. It will have been three years by the time this fight comes around, but June 29th, T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas. The world is going to go absolutely ballistic because Conor McGregor's coming back, and I can't wait. Look, listen, love him or hate him, you cannot deny that Conor McGregor is the most exciting fighter on the planet, right? I'm not talking just UFC, mixed martial arts. All of combat sports, he's the most exciting guy on the planet because what he brings to the table, win or lose, he talks a lot of shit, he backs it up most of the time. Conor, Conor, do you know what? wrestling here? I can, I can rest my balls on your forehead. <laughs> yeah, I know. So. And people just can't wait to see him, right? Whether they want to see him win or lose, okay, it's always something worth watching. You always got to tune in. The pay-per-views are through the roof. And that's partly now because he doesn't fight very frequently, okay? If he was fighting every two or three months, you really wouldn't care. But it's been three years, so there's a lot of questions going into this fight. Now, for Michael Chandler, one of those questions has been answered. Yes, he's going to get the fight. People were thinking, was it going to be Nate Diaz? Could you reach out and swing at each other right now, Connor? No, he's hiding somewhere. I don't know where this <laughs> motherfucker is at. <laughs> the trilogy there. Well, no, of course. It was always going to be Michael Chandler. They filmed the Ultimate Fighters together. If I told you what way it's going to be, 184. You want to do 185, <laughs> I'll do 185. <laughs> It'll do what you are told. And Conor McGregor had to honor that, and he's coming back at 185 pounds. And that's the big question here, right? Is he making a mistake? Is he making a massive mistake fighting at 185 pounds? Because you've got to talk about the optimal weight class of fighters. When Conor came to the UFC, 145 pounds, 40 pounds lighter than the middleweight limit, right? He was incredible. He set the world on fire. He became a two-weight division champion. And jumping up 10 pounds to lightweight, it's not that big of a deal. He was razor fast. His reflexes were on point. He had massive power in that left hand, and he was super athletic. But even back then, he would get a little bit tired. Now he's jumping up from 45, 55, 70 to 185 pounds, a weight class that he's never fought in before against a really tough opponent in Michael Chandler. And of course, three years away from the octagon and recovering from a broken leg. Now, he announced the fight on Twitter, right? Sitting there with a glass of wine in his hand, right? Looking big, looking large, right? Ladies and gentlemen, a happy new year to you all. I'd like to announce the return date for myself, the notorious Conor McGregor, for the greatest comeback of all time. It will take place in Las Vegas for International Fight Week on June the 29th. Come a little closer. And the opponent, Michael Chandler. And the weight, Mr. Chandler, 185 pounds. <laughs> and rightly so, it's Christmas. Let the man enjoy himself. And he's got plenty of time to prepare for the fight. He's got about six months, okay? That's a lot of time. That's an absolute lifetime when it comes to combat sports. So a lot can change in that time, right? But you're not going to be the best version of yourself at 185 pounds when you can make 145. That's just a fact. He's going to be slower, okay? And he's going to get tired quicker. If you look at the fight, the second fight against Nate Diaz, right? What happened in that fight? Yes, he won. Yes, it was an incredible fight. But yes, he got tired. There was even a couple of times he had to go for a little jog halfway through it, not to help his conditioning, to get away from Nate Diaz because he was tired, right? And going into that fight, the second one against Nate, you bet the motivation was there. Don't tell me that he didn't work his ass off because Nate Diaz choked him out. He was the first person to beat him in the UFC. Hey, I'm not surprised. <laughs> so he had all the motivation in the world and he still got tired. Now, yes, that fight was at 170 pounds, right? But that was against Nate Diaz, who's a lightweight. And this is at 185, okay, against Michael Chandler, who's also a lightweight. It's not like he's stepping in there against an Israel Adesanya, a Drickus Duplessis, a Sean Strickland. That would just be ridiculous, okay? Uh, he's fighting another lightweight at 185 pounds. So they're both bulking up. So what's that going to do? Well, of course, Connor will have increased power. 
because whether it's muscle or fat, heavy, right? The more heavy, the heavier you are, you generate more force, but it's gonna slow you down, right? And I truly believe that the instincts, the reflexes will also be slowed, but more importantly, the big thing here is that it's gonna make him tired. And if he gets tired and Chandler uses the correct game plan, he could be a sitting duck by round two and three. Granted, for Michael Chandler, he's going to have to be careful in round one because McGregor already hits hard and with the extra weight behind him, I'm sure he's going to crack, right? But what version of McGregor is going to show up? A, because of the leg. A, because of the three years away. On top of that, he's a very, very wealthy man, okay? He's got fame. He's, he's, he's achieved everything he wanted to achieve through combat sports, but he still chooses to fight. Number one, I respect that because you know why? You know, all the money on planet Earth, right? He can have all the yachts and the Lamborghinis and whatever, right? But you cannot buy that feeling when you go out there in front of the world and you knock another man out. You jump on top of the yachts and you raise your hands in the air and you're the winner and the whole world world goes mental. You are the man. That's the best feeling ever, right? You can't buy that, okay? And you can't buy the respect from the fight community either. And you certainly can't buy being the champion of the world. And that's what he's chasing. He wants that feeling. He wants to be the champ. And you have to respect that. Now, I said, is he making a huge mistake? And here's another reason why I think potentially it's a huge mistake. Because, look, listen, it's going to be easy to make 185 pounds, right? He could probably make 185 pounds next week if he wanted to, right? I heard that he's training in Dubai. He's about 200 pounds. He's a little bit slow and all the rest of it. But, of course, he's not in camp, right? He's not in fight shape. So that's fine. In between fights, I will get very slow and I will get very out of shape. And even though when the fight came around, my cardio was ridiculous, okay? Um, he hasn't fought for a while. So he's just blowing off the cobwebs and he's getting ready. But... The problem is when you have to make weight, right? Let's just say he is 185. Let's say he's 200 pounds right now. If he had to get down to 155, that's a mammoth task. So what does that force you to do? It forces you to be disciplined. It forces you to get out of bed and do the road work, to push yourself tooth and nail, to train as hard as you can with every single training session, okay? Because you gotta make weight, right? If you don't make weight, the fight almost doesn't count, okay, right? Nothing pisses me off more than guys not making weight if, if this is what you really want to do. But, bro, you blew it. He's not bothered about getting cut from the organization or anything like that, but it's not a good look. As a fighter, you can only control two things. You can't control whether or not you win or lose the fight, but you've got to show up on weight and in shape. If you don't do that, you should be ashamed of yourself. So he's got to make weight. That's a fact. But making that weight will not force discipline. It will not instill the fighter's kind of routine that he needs to follow. You need to be getting up at the crack of dawn and going for a morning run, right? You need to be pushing yourself to the limit in every training session. You need to be working towards a goal throughout an eight 10 week period, whatever the time frame is, right? Because you're hungry, you've got the date, you've got to get the weight off, right? And, and you, you're forced to be disciplined. You follow a strict diet, you eat only the correct foods. Eight o'clock in the morning, I'll have fish and a rice cake. At 10 o'clock, I'll have fish. At four o'clock, just before a train, I'll have fish and a rice cake. You're taking on all the correct legal supplements, okay? And you're all working towards a date. He can make 185 next week. So what is that going to mean? Will he take it lightly, right? We've all heard the, uh, you know, the sleeping in silk sheets thing. It's hard to get out of bed in the morning and go for a run when you're sleeping in silk sheets. Conor McGregor's sleeping in whatever kind of sheets he wants. Silk, gold, diamond, you, you name it, right? He doesn't have to make weight. He's got money, right? His legacy set in stone, right? That's all there. So what is he doing? What is he fighting for? He's fighting for that feeling. But that feeling might not appear, it might not show itself, it might not present itself if he doesn't do the work. Because you can bet your bottom dollar, Michael Chandler is doing the work. This whole time he's been doing the work. I mean, every day you just look on his Twitter or Instagram, he's lifting weights, he's doing squats, he's doing kettlebell swings, you know what I mean? He's teaching the children, he's being a bloody good old fashioned American, right? And he's inspiring the next generation. That's just who Michael Chandler is. You're never gonna see him falling outside of nightclubs and bloody you know, getting involved in scandals and things like that. He's a nice, sensible, great young man. And he's a beast inside the octagon. And you can bet your bottom dollar, he shows up in the best shape possible. Now, fair enough, for Chandler, carrying all that extra weight, 
That will come at a price as well for him. It will come at a price for him, but he will be motivated because for him, he's got the ability to go out there, to come back after he's been away from the Octagon for almost two years as well, waiting on the sidelines like a good little boy, but to come back to beat Conor McGregor in one of the biggest fights of the year, to cause an upset in the greatest comeback in the history of sports, take Conor McGregor's scalp and make millions of dollars in the process. It's not the same thing from, for Conor McGregor. That motivation isn't there. He's the prize. He's the A-side. For him, it's just showing up. It's another day at the office. And it's a day at the office where he can show up late, where he can show up overweight. And 185, he will be overweight. It will slow him down. It will cause him to get tired, right? And he's not going to be as strong as Michael Chandler either. Michael Chandler's a beast, okay? And he's a wrestler. Those guys are strong as fuck. Let me tell you that. So... Is he making a mistake? Or is he just making this whole story even better, right? What do you think? What version of Conor McGregor shows up? Do you think he smokes Michael Chandler? The bookies have Conor as the favorite. I think if Conor gets it done, he wins by knockout and it will be in the first round. That's a fact. If he goes past two rounds, I think he's going to be tired. But what do I know? I'm a Hall of Famer, a former world champion. At one point, I had the most fights and the most wins in the history of the organization. But I'm talking out of my ass and I'm just spitballing here. I'm just having to think. I think 185 might be a mistake or could it be the greatest comeback, the greatest gamble in all of combat sports? I guess only time will tell. Now, I've had a little break from the YouTube stuff. Uh, sorry about that. Christmas, went to England, spent some time with my family, got to see my mother. So that was a nice mental reset. Hope you've all been well. Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you all for being here, for subscribing to the channel. We're, we're at about 600,000 subscribers now, so we're growing quickly. Hopefully a million is on the horizon sometime soon. So thank you all for the support. If you haven't subscribed, then what are you waiting for? Hit that button right now, ring the bell, be well, take care, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.